What would you do in this situation? I was just looking at the ground and noticed shoe prints in the snow going toward the building. Not really the front of the building, but kind of off to the side. If there's any more entrances or exits on the building, I'm gonna make sure they're secure so there's one way in, one way out. Before a thump resonated through the building from behind me. There's this channel called MJV Animations, and they produce some of the best, like, mini short horror stories that I've ever seen. And it's crazy because it's addicting. I find myself watching a full hour 30, maybe two hours of this content. I want to say all the stories are based on real situations, which blows my mind because some of these stories, I'm like, yeah, it just gave me the creeps for real. I ain't saying I'm the toughest guy on the planet. You know what I mean? It's a couple little things that it's a little eerie to me. So today we're going to react to some horror stories, man. But it's one thing for somebody to just tell you a horror story. When they got the full animation to go along with the storyline, makes it that much better. It's really a whole immersive experience. So, I say we do it together. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'm cranking these videos out, because I love you. And I appreciate you for tuning in. You feel me? If you scared, go to church. I'm ready. It was a snowy night when I pulled into the parking lot of my gas station. I worked the overnight 11 to 7 shift and had been at the job for several months before this. I really <laughs> didn't like this job, <laughs> but finding somewhere else. Hold on. Hold on. This looked like my boy Sean a little bit. Sean, if you watch this, I'm sorry. They made an animated version of you, bro. It, it is what it is, man. It is more flattering than anything, right? I see you. I see you, man. Do, do your thing. Else to work was really difficult, and due to how some things were in other aspects of my life, night shifts were the best for my personal schedule. Still, though, I went in tired every night and struggled to get through every shift. I feel it. I parked in front of the building beside the only other car in the parking lot, which was my co-worker's. Then I uh... went inside and relieved him of his shift. He left a couple minutes later, and then it was just me for the rest of the night. My manager had a paper on the desk with some things to get done, but from reading it over, it wasn't all that much. My guess was that it would take no more than an hour total to complete all the tasks, so I tried to put it off as long as possible to save me from falling asleep once- Ah, uh, man, look, I, I know those times. <laughs> I feel like we being set up right now. Okay, it's snowing outside, it's already late. You don't wanna be there. You tired, you falling asleep while you stocking inventory, moving stuff around. You trying to get these tasks done, I feel you. What's, what's the worst thing that could happen, right? You just finish your shift and go on your merry way, go to the crib, you know, you might have a little snack before you go to sleep and you start it all over again the next day, right? I'm just gonna assume that's probably not what's gonna happen. Let's see. I started getting really tired but as I sat there behind the desk and somewhere around 12 a.m. a car pulled into the station I glanced out the window seeing an old SUV parked by one of the pumps of course with it snowing outside most people were not driving around but getting a customer every once in a while was normal I went back to my phone and scrolled through huh. some videos somebody could be getting off a second shift or starting their third shift job and they got to go fill up. That's normal. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Detention for probably 10 minutes until I looked back outside and saw the SUV was still there by the pump. The headlights were off and the doors were closed, looking like they should be pumping gas, but, they... but it'd been so long. I stood up and got closer to the window, okay. looking down both sides of the building, but nobody was anywhere outside. If they had been in their car for the past 10 minutes with it off, they'd have to be freezing. It was snowy, windy, and cold, yeah, so I honestly right? got a little nervous for them. 
I paid more attention for the next few minutes, waiting to see any movement through the dark windows or for someone to get back inside their car. But there was nothing. It was okay. So, like, bro, um, whoever this is, this is really suspicious because he just said it's cold as shit outside. If your car's off for longer than ten to fifteen minutes, man, you you're gonna freeze. That's just what it is. A spade is a spade. What you doing outside the whip? You lurking? What like? What would you do in this situation? If it's me, I'm going to just wait it out for a minute. You know what I mean? I'm going to make sure the back door is locked. If there's any more entrances or exits on the building, I'm going to make sure they're secure. So it's one way in, one way out. That's what I'm going to do right about now. Hopefully, you got a piece behind that counter just in case something pop off. You don't really know what's going to happen in that situation because it could be a regular day. Well, it could be something more sinister. It's like the car was just abandoned right next to the pump. After some thoughts, I put on my jacket and went outside. Immediately. Bro, what the? I was speaking about myself. He basically just disregarded every single thing I said. Like, I understand the concern. But it's just you and that other person out there. And you don't know this person's intentions at the end of the day. Right, Lay? You don't know. What would, what, what would you do? Come here. You think somebody got the best intentions. But ain't no telling. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I ain't. I wouldn't have too much faith. Because they, if they gave you a couple treats, man. You see, see your ears go up. If they gave you a couple treats. I think, I think you let your guard down. I knew I was right. It was way too cold for anyone to be in there with the car off. Exactly. Or for anyone to even be outside for more than a few minutes. I rushed over to the car and looked around. Then put my face close to the window and tried to look inside. <laughs> Hello? Anyone in there? Just checking to see if you're okay. I called out. That's a noble thing to do. I could see, there wasn't anyone inside. It wasn't exactly easy to see, so someone could have been, but I was pretty sure there wasn't. Now even more confused, I backed up and looked around at the empty gas station parking lot before starting to walk back. Uh -oh. Now with my eyes not focused on the car. I don't know how this is going to go, man. I don't want somebody to just pop out on them. You got your back turned. You confused already, and you already don't want to be at work car i was just looking at the ground and noticed shoe prints in the snow going toward the building i got not I really got the you, front baby. of the building but kind of off to the side i looked back and saw that they seemed to come from the car but at this point i was freezing and didn't want to investigate further without warming up a bit first yeah get inside and turned on the small heater next to the counter putting my hands in front of it to warm them up Oh, it's brick outside if it's like that. I was only inside for 30 seconds to a minute, though, before a thump resonated through the building from behind me. I spun around. Hold on, hold up. Hold up. All right, see, this is what I'm talking about. If you already got your guard up, and things ain't making sense, like the math is not math, and you don't, you don't even know where this person is. So if it was me, I would have been on high alert, man. Like I'm watching the door every single chance I get. There's <laughs> there's no way you about to sneak up on me, man. Like, hey, I can't do that. I'm not going for it. Not seeing anything. Then walked around the counter and toward the back. On the floor, there were puddles of dirty water like snow that had melted off someone's boots oh check the back door feeling a chill run through me i stepped closer to the back room and turned the corner toward where the supply room was standing in the dark behind one of the shelves i could see the outline of a figure they were tall with broad shoulders and had a large scruffy beard hell no nah. they were looking right at me ain't no way my heart stopped for a moment but after the initial shock my reaction was to just walk back to the counter 
all this walking and slow movements just bro at this point you gotta be freaked out man like shouldn't the back door be secure at all times for the sake of and safety of everybody not not only the people that work there not the employees not the people that supply the stock room um the customers as well man because you could just you can never you never really know what can happen anything can happen so everybody at that gas station failed and now you're faced with you're faced with a face that you can't see but you can make the outline it the figure in the back room Don't casually go back to the counter. Run to the counter. Go get the do dirt and get ready to do work. That's it. That's it. That's me. I don't know about you. He got my anxiety through the roof right now. I don't know why. Maybe I was just too shocked to react appropriately. I get that. After staring at the doorway to the <laughs> supply room for I don't even know how long. I quietly picked up the store phone and called the police, whispering for help. Then I endured the most unnerving 10 minutes of my life as I waited. Oh my God. During this time, I didn't hear or see anything from the supply room. Depending on where his jacket and his car keys are, like mine would be in my pocket no matter what. I might just grab my shit and head to the front door, hop in my car, and I think I'm going to uh, alleviate my situation. I think I'm going to relieve myself from my shift. I'm going to be honest. I know you want to go outside. I got you. I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you. Which honestly added to my fear. For some reason, the man never came out to confront me. He never came. Out. Bro, what is he doing? When two cops finally pulled in and came inside, I quietly told them where the man was. They searched the room while I stayed by the front. And he was gone. But I was shocked when they came out with nobody else. Oh. The man was gone. Watery shoe prints surrounded the back door, but outside were fresh tracks in the snow going straight away from the gas station. I got straight you, baby. Straight into the completely dark, empty field that I led got you, on baby. for miles. Obviously, nobody could search that at like, night, I got you. but even when they did in the following days, they didn't find anything. Uh, I mean, the field damn. was huge. He could have gone anywhere, but it was so cold and windy that night that I was what? almost sure that they'd find a body. The SUV was taken in for hopefully more information. I'm so disturbed. I don't know how or why, but for some reason, they couldn't find any history of ownership. So that left us with just what we know from that night. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Let me recap. You go to work like it's a regular shift. You work in the night shift, the graveyard shift, whatever you want to call it. Cool. See your co-worker. Hey, man, you can go home. It's my time. It's a regular night. Stocking the shelves, getting some tasks done. You see a random person pull up to the pump. Everybody needs gas, no matter what time of day it is. They don't pump gas, though. And the car's off, and it's freezing outside. And then you see, then you get a little suspicious. You walk outside, and you look in the vehicle. There's nobody there. The vehicle's turned off. You just so happen to see footprints leading to the building that you just came out of. Specifically, the back of the building. Okay. You decide to go back into the building. You're still on the clock. You went to the supply room and you saw a figure in the darkness looking right in your direction. So, okay, I, I understand the fact that you were in shock because, like, what do you do in that situation? Me, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time contemplating. You know what I mean? Like, is, is that job really worth it for what, what could potentially happen? And that's what we don't know. See, that's the thing that's under wraps. So now you casually, must I say, in shock, go to the counter, grab the phone. Oh, there's a man standing in the supply room 
Yeah, he's not supposed to be here. Uh, could you please bring out the sheriff? I, I, I mean, on the hop. I, I, I'm terrified, sir. That, it probably didn't go like that, but that's basically... He said he whispered. He said he whispered. I, I'd have been a little scarred from that one. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And we are still left with just that. Who the man was and what he was doing Nobody know. remains unsolved. And where he is now is just as much of a question. Look, man, I've fallen in love with this channel. You can't help but binge watch these stories because as much as I want to be like, all right, maybe this is made up. Maybe it's a real report that took place. Maybe AI could generate a story for you and you can narrate it, right? And then have somebody do the animations. I don't know. But it's even more eerie to me that I believe this is a real story. And that's there's there was no real outcome in this situation you're just like confused terrified anxious and sleepy if i was him i'm working first shift now i ain't saying it won't be some weird stuff happening during first shift but i think it's a lot more likely when you work in the graveyard let me know in the comments if you like this video, man, and if you want me to continue diving into these stories, because I'm I'm hooked. Hey, man, let me know what you would have done in this situation, because I know it's a lot of people that are like overly concerned, like, oh, maybe they just needed help, and oh, and, and. I would like to seek out the best in people, but there was literally no interaction in this situation, so. I think it's best to just kind of mind your business and get out the way. Maybe you got beef with the owner or something. If that's the case, let him and the owner take that up. Don't get caught in the crosshairs. I know you want to do your job, but you want to live too. I'm hopping in the car and I'm unemployment. Damn. If I quit, if you quit, you can't get unemployment. Maybe this isn't as simple as I thought it was. I'll see y'all in the next one, man. I'm out.